Welcome back. Many thanks for staying with us. Anger and more of it is what President Akufado has added to the ongoing brouhaha of the Parliament's ratification of a controversial defense cooperation agreement between Ghana and the United States of America. Last night, President Akufado responded to those opposing the agreements and everyone got their share. The opposition NDC, their members of parliament, the media, and those who poured onto the, two, uh, the street two weeks ago to vent their anger all had their fair share of the president's outrage. With reaction from all of those involved, including the NDC and you on the street. First, listen to President Kufwada deny the claim that the military base, well, that what the Americans want is a military base in Ghana. Submitting this agreement to open scrutiny now allows us to clear the unhealthy fog that has clouded our relations with the United States of America. The conduct of Ghana's foreign policy and its relations with the nations of the world has happily been traditionally above the partisans of partisan politics. Allowing for the normal differences of approach, which will sometimes occur, our foreign policy has been consistently bipartisan, and no successor government has found the need to tamper with any agreement of a non-commercial nature entered into by its predecessor. We respect the age-old norms of international diplomacy that when a country is accorded privileges and concessions to another, these are not removed or altered by a successor government, unless firstly, the conditions under which they were granted have been reversed, or secondly, there's proven evidence of abuse. My government came to know that Ghana had entered into a cooperation agreement with the United States of America in 1998 2000, and under the government of my predecessor in 2015. We were satisfied that the conditions which necessitated the agreement, namely the creeping threat to the peace of the region, had not disappeared. If anything, the threat had increased, and therefore the need had arisen for continuing with our cooperation. No suggestion had ever been made that the United States of America had abused any of the privileges or concessions granted under any of these agreements. And it would have thus been a, a deemed an unfriendly act to attempt to deny them any concession granted them under these agreements. Fellow Ghanaians, above everything else, the crux of the matter is this. Ghana has built a formidable reputation for its contribution to peacekeeping around the world. Although these peacekeeping operations have always been under the aegis of the United Nations, no one doubts the fact that they have been made possible by the contributions largely of the United States of America. The cooperation agreement which has subsisted, which we have approved, can only enhance the global effort to preserve the peace in our region. It is important also to state that the conditions of the agreement mirror closely the conditions under which Ghana participated in peacekeeping operations under the United Nations. When our troops go on most peacekeeping duties, they do not carry their national passports, they carry their military identity. Quite apart from how this is agreement involves the military as an institution, it is worth pointing out that virtually since independence, Ghana has had very fruitful relations with a range of foreign embassies and major international institutions. These include the United Nations, the World Bank, the International Monetary Fund, the African Development Bank, the International Finance Corporation, amongst others. All these agencies enjoy similar conditions as those which the cooperation agreement offers to the U.S. military here. No one has dared suggest 
the granting these foreign embassies and international institutions these concessions constitute an, as, an attack on the sovereignty of Ghana. Nor has anyone also felt that the concessions have in any way worked against the interests of Ghana. Indeed, I have no doubt that it will be the general consensus of all well-informed Ghanaians that this nation has benefited significantly from the presence and activities of these institutions over the past decades. So let me state with the clearest affirmation that Ghana has not offered a military base and will not offer a military base to the United States of America. Indeed, the United States of America has not made any request for such consideration. And consistent with our established foreign policy, we will not consider any such request. However, in consideration of the realities of our circumstances and the challenges to peace in our region in our time, we have deemed it prudent to continue the cooperation agreement with the United States of America. It is our firm belief that the agreement will help enhance our defense capability and offer an important layer of support in our common effort to protect the peace in our region. Fellow Ghanaians, let me conclude by saying how outraged I am by the defamatory comments from my political opponents, some of whose patriotism can be so easily questioned, that the sovereignty of this country has been sold by my government and myself. I will never be the president that will compromise or sell the sovereignty of our country. I respect deeply the memory of the great patriots whose sacrifice and toil brought about our independence and freedom. I have stood with you, the Ghanaian people, all my adult life, fighting for our individual and collective rights. Everything I have done since assuming the great honor and privilege of serving you as President of the Republic demonstrates that I remain focused on building a self-reliant, free, prosperous Ghana, which will be able to make her own unique contribution to the growth and development of Africa and the world. Let us concentrate and spend our energies on working together to achieve that goal of a happy and prosperous Ghana and reject the hypocrisy of the naysayers who led our country into bankruptcy and the worst economic record of modern Ghanaian history. Let us rise above them and build the Ghana of our destiny, the land of freedom, justice, progress, and prosperity. President Akufado there yesterday in the, what was a national address on all media uh, platforms. So we've been engaging some Ghanaians on the streets of Accra who say they remain unconvinced. You'll hear that shortly. But first, the Inter-Party Coalition for National Sovereignty, that they call, uh, as they call themselves, has lashed out at the president for what they say is his, quote, poor handling of an address to the nation in response to widespread concerns over the controversial U.S.-Ghana cooperation agreement. The group, led by the Ghana First Freedom Movement, has been up in arms over what they described as an attempt to sell Ghana's sovereignty so cheaply. Responding to the president's address, they say they are strengthened in their resolve to challenge the agreement. Bernard Mona is spokesperson of the group. Because of the national interests, we refuse to descend into the gutters to exchange insults with the president due to the sensitive nature of the issue at hand. We rather urge the president to leave his anger, defiant and arrogant posture, and lead the good people of Ghana. Ladies and gentlemen, it was indeed shocking listening to the man who is often touted as a Democrat berating his opponents in such undignified manner. It is important for the president and the MPP apologists to understand that dissent 
is part of democracy. To express contrary views is not to seek the overthrow of the constitutional order. To dissent is a democratic right, a patriotic duty of every Ghanaian. We refuse to be intimidated by the rapaging attacks of the president and his assigns on opponents of the military base in Ghana. If the president hopes to win the argument through fear mongering and bullying, that is his choice, but we will stand up to him and any vigilante groups the authorities will unleash to perpetuate violence on those opposed to the military base in Ghana. The shambolic national address by the president leaves us with no choice but to intensify our protest and campaigns against this bogus deal. We therefore wish to serve notice that we will, in unison with other progressives and nationalistic forces, continue to wage a sustained campaign to register our displeasure at this deal. It will be an unrelenting campaign aimed at sending a clear and unambiguous message to the president, President Akufado and his government, that we cherish our sovereignty and we will adopt all legitimate means to defend it. Bernard Monade, what well, the group is also describing as false claims by the president that the agreement is similar to peacekeeping arrangements between Ghana and other countries. Listen to the General Secretary of the NDC, Johnson, Asir Nketia. They are saying that this agreement does not represent the interests of Ghana. And so we as Ghanaians will fight it. And that is why we are fighting it. So approver or no approver, we will continue fighting it. But we still have issue with what they call <laughs> approver. And we have said so that the so-called exercise that was done in Parliament, in our view, has been an exercise in futility. It doesn't amount to ratification as demanded by Article 75 of the Constitution. Because Article 75 says that the President must execute an agreement. Then the agreement must be brought to Parliament for ratification. The document before Parliament had not been executed so in our view, it was not properly before Parliament. Okay? So if they say you must die before you are buried, hmm? and somebody comes trying to bury you alive, <laughs> it's, a, it's a different ball game altogether. I didn't expect <laughs> the president to be repeating the discredited ag argument about whether they were similar agreements in 98, 2005, 1900, uh, 1844, and all those things. <laughs> because you yourself have admitted that these, were these have been agreements that have run their course and they have expired. And you are coming to replace it with a better agreement. Why do you keep on talking about agreements that are dead and gone? And in any case, it is because your party found something wrong with some of those agreements. That was why you went to the Supreme Court for interpretation. It was apologies of MPP that went to Supreme Court for interpretation about how we should uh, approach international agreements. And the Supreme Court has come to interpret with finality how we should approach this things. Then immediately after the Supreme Court ruling, the same people who took the thing to court, you are now going to act in breach of what Supreme Court has directed. And when you are asked, you are citing instances that occurred before that Supreme Court ruling. If you felt everything was okay, why did you go to Supreme Court in the first place? Why is he comparing these things? 
In the meantime, the minority in parliament has come hard on the president after that address last night. Minority spokesperson on foreign affairs, Samuel Kujetua Blakwa, said the president's comments are, quote, disappointing and insulting. Haruna Idrisu and Mahama Yarga have also been speaking. A party in the agreement that you want to exit. If you do not, it's forever and ever. So all successive governments are bound by this agreement. And that is why, in my open letter, I appeal to the president that if you create a platform, let's try and take this heat away, the uh, confrontation, MPP, NDC, the political football. This is national security. This is about international relations. Our relations with the United States of America is at stake. Our relations with other countries is at stake because other countries are watching. And you don't need all of this confrontation and the conflagration. You don't need it. Uh, but unfortunately, the president decided to rather strike a very belligerent, very adamant, and, uh, and, and honestly, the president appeared, I don't know who advised him to adapt this approach. He honestly, with all due respect, he appeared very arrogant, very condescending. He just came to talk down to us, you know, and he called everybody who had concerns about this agreement um, hypocrites. Um, misguided elements, people who have who are selfish, self seekers, who are out to just um, uh, just for anybody to accuse the NDC of a leakage, that is palpable, unacceptable. I mean I respect the president, so I can't use very strong words. But essentially a document which is available to the media on Monday is laid in Parliament on Tuesday, Wednesday, and MPs are blamed for leaking the same document. That, that the truth, uh, to quote him, is sacrosanct. Let us establish the truth in this matter. Mm -hmm. You are aware that Joy FM, you had indication, mm -hmm. the full document, mm -hmm. and even played excerpts of it mm -hmm. before it got to Parliament. Mm -hmm. Therefore, we will not accept that charge. Okay. The third charge is to, and it's, it's regrettable, stereotyping, mm -hmm. uh, to use the comment of one member of the NDC to which the party itself have officially, through the General Secretary, Johnson has said in Katia, dissociated himself mm -hmm. to condemn the NDC as if we are plotting to overthrow the government. Let me give the President a firm assurance that we will support him to deepen our democratic values and ethos, to deepen our democratic institutions, and to endure our democracy. But he must be open to accept some criticisms of it. He came across as somebody on the offensive, attacking people who have disagreements with him. And I thought that as a president, he shouldn't have proceeded along those lines to a point where I thought he was descending into the issues of the week that many of us had already said wasn't the best. But I thought at the level of the president, he could have skipped that. I mean, the arrest of Koku and the statements that Koku made and etc. And uh, <clears throat> he, he tries to present those who have disagreement with this uh, agreement that he has gone to commit himself to with the Americans as people who are not patriots, people who are dishonest, people who uh, pretentious and, and all. I to add about the leaks that the president was talking about, I feel very disappointed from the president when he talks that way because he served in parliament, I met him in parliament, and he's been in parliament for 12 years before he left. And he knows the rules of the house. Parliament does not sit on Monday. Colleagues in the media, remember, the paper was laid in parliament on 20th March, which was a Tuesday. And this was done on Tuesday afternoon. After the laying of the paper, I was one of the first parliamentarians to get a copy. Because after laying, our standard orders are very clear. When sufficient copies are available, then you lay and distribute. So after it was laid, I waited. After about one and a half hours, I sent my usher to the pigeon hole. He went and there was no copies. So I called the clerk at table and said, Chief, why? You've laid this in up now, we don't have copies. So oh, they are in my office. I said, can I have mine? Then he went and brought one. This was Tuesday. But all of you will admit, by Monday evening, these things were being discussed in the media. 
so in fairness let's put the issue of whether when dogma is in parliament it can be discussed in public and other things. in principle how can a reasonable person blame parliament for the leak because the paper was only laid on tuesday meanwhile this one was being discussed on monday i heard at least on one of the network joy fm monday evening they were discussing it so how could anybody say that it was leaked after it was late on tuesday but let me also say as a representative of the people every document that is laid in parliament if they want it to be a secret document there are processes that we go through once you lay it ordinarily and you give me a copy it is my responsibility to disseminate that information to my constituents and those that I know may help me with further information so that I will gather the relevant information so that when the thing is being discussed, I will not be contributing on the position of ignorance. So even as a member of parliament, if I receive the document and it has not been marked and you've not taken it through the procedure, that says that this is something that is supposed to be kept only within the house. Immediately, I can WhatsApp it to my constituents and ask them, what is your view? And gather those views so that when the debate comes, I can put all that together and contribute to the debate. So I think what the president was saying was really baseless. So I think that this should settle the issue. Most of our made you can pardon him. He has not been a member of parliament before, so he doesn't know the rules. But after the president, you can't pardon the president because the president has been a member of parliament for 12 years and he knows the rules of the house. So he cannot be repeating what Mustafa Hamid is repeating because Mustafa Hamid is, has never been a member of parliament. Thank you very much. Yes. Those are members of the minority in parliament they're speaking. Well, who else have we been talking to? Former Deputy Foreign Affairs Minister Emmanuel Bombande. We've been engaging him on a Skype interview. Actually, my colleague, uh, Benis Abubedu, did on news desk earlier. He said the president hasn't sold Ghana's sovereignty in relation to a military agreement with the United States of uh, uh, the United States uh, government. Emmanuel Bombande believes that the sovereignty of Ghana is intact, and that's a view that contradicts the position held by leaders of the NDC. But there are signs of weaknesses, he says, in the 2018 agreement. Let us not make the assumption that our relationship with the United States is predicated on how we deal with this agreement. We, right from our independence, have always had a policy that is non-aligned but recognizes that in international relations we will continue to cooperate and work with all countries of goodwill. Ghana and the United States will continue to be good friends. But in friendship, it does not mean that are it's always rosy. There are times there are patches. And what you need to do is to recognize that the best way of building the partnership and the friendship is when you are sincere, frank, and honest with yourself in dealing with your partner. And not when you undermine yourself, hoping that that is going to increase the friendship with your partner. What is going to happen is that your partner would simply look at you to be ridiculous, and that type of friendship is not sustainable. So let's have a partnership and a friendship that has existed in the past and will continue to exist because of the mutual respect that we have for one another. And that means the friendship to be genuine mm. and to have quality. Emmanuel Bombande there, he was invited at the latter part of the NDC administration earlier to serve. Now let's go on social media and find out what some of you have been saying. In fact, there's been a whole lot of messages from people across the board, myself included actually. And so let me start with Kofi Gibbo. He says in matters, matters like this, you don't ask the view of a politician, you ask the neutrals. If you ask the opposition about this issue, all that you get will be nonsense because he's blind and deaf. Uh, uh, and, and that's on party lines. Uh, Kofi, that's your uh, opinion. Question Kate Kwaku says he perhaps, you're talking about the president, I assume, he perhaps didn't ask himself some questions before speaking. He didn't say anything different from what the party communicator said apart from his anger. Why is John Dramani Mahama not in power and still, and okay, so you're asking why the former president is, still, is not in power. But yet he's, so, he's been blamed for the undemocratic practices 
uh, he did in which the president thinks otherwise. Okay, I hope I, I got that right. Look for something different to tell us. You say, Paul Thompson says this president should give us a break. He should have gone into the merit of what the citizens are bringing up and stop the big English and the attacks. That would not take him anywhere. Harry Sechi says, who are his handlers and advisors at all? He spoke angrily like a serial caller. He's full of tension and intolerance. Uh, Harry, that's your view. Nana Kwame Reno says, Alidus. Okay, Alidus goes. Okay, that's like a, that's a book. I think that's referring to a book. You say you now realize Ghanaians needed a brilliant leader, and now that they got him, you you uh, you want to do? I don't agree. I don't agree. Ah, uh, you want to do? I don't agree. I don't agree. Things. Okay. Nana Wachijinia said, cynical manipulation by reckless self-seekers and hypocrites, and then you laugh and you put in bracket NDC. Akosia Solomon Akosa says. A yariga and you put a question mark there and you say um, I, I, I kind of think you're saying uh, Kai like you know like really sort of thing um, those are some of the comments there from social media so whilst we're talking or asking for your views on social media we've also been asking for uh, the views of the people who are walking our streets yes what they think actually yesterday I thought that the president should have been a unifier it's true that the opposition were saying their own thing. So you having the opportunity should have been able to explain things to us better. I agree with also as saying he sound more attacking. Um, I thought that he could have educated us on what Ghana stands to benefit. He should have spent that time, I mean, more on doing that than to attack his political opponents into saying that. But I'm quite a bit disappointed anyway. I'm a bit disappointed because um, he should have been able to explain things to us into details as to what we stand to get. I mean, on the part of the military, on the part of we Ghanaians as civilians, what we stand to get. Because some of us are a bit frightened. So if you, are, you have the opportunity to explain things to us as Ghanaians, I thought that you should neglect your opponent and go straight to the point. So you should have explained to us why you think that you've not sold our sovereignty. I think for the president to come out to speak, he has cleared everybody's tears. All this why we, some of us, we think that um, uh, our sovereignty has been sold. I think what the president said, it makes sense to each and every Ghanaian. So the president said Ghana will never be sold to any other foreign country. And what he will, he will do as a, as a president, that he will make sure that he will protect our sovereignty and every Ghanaian is saved. It was in the right direction that the president came out. And it's, it's good. There's no military base in Ghana. And that I'm relieved. As citizens of the country, we have the right to information. And it's, it's, it's um, being fit that we know what is going on. We know what we stand to benefit as a nation. And so I think it's the responsibility of the president to tell us what we benefit or what we are going to derive from this military-based agreement. And so if he comes out and he's not telling us what we are supposed to benefit and he sounds insulting, it's not, it's not the best way of approaching the issue. One thing I saw was... He, he was a little bit angry, so he was trying to push out and saying some things. When he started, he, he, he started doing jobs and he said a friend of him, a friend of his said something to him some time back. For me, when I heard the military deal, I was one person who was very angry with it because when I read what was in the deal, seeing that there will be, there will be a base here for them to come and stay and there will be unrestricted access to our radio spectrums and stuff. So it really got me into it. So I, so I really wanted to know why it should be so. So yesterday, we really didn't come and say what we were supposed to say. Call it a bit of a, a, bit of a mixed uh, thoughts there. Those are voices on the streets. And now that to what's happening on social media, if you like other to what the minority in parliament are saying, and you can draw your own conclusion. You're still watching The Pulse with me, Gifty and Pia. Take a very quick break.